going through the, uh, my life from those years, I can remember very clearly the uh, the Appalite Vine and how we played with the children and things like that. My, uh, my father actually had two pets. He had a dog named Caesar and he had a mule. Now, Caesar was a cross between a Great Dane and an African wild dog. And uh, he was very big, but also I think people were actually frightened of him. He would drive into Katuma with the family, and as soon as they arrived, he would look for the local butcher and help himself to a bit of meat. And uh, Uncle Percy, of course, followed that up and paid the bill. Um, but they also went to the hotel. Now, my father would take his place and uh, Uncle Percy would take his place as well at the table. And so then Caesar would take his place. Uh, when the, the waiter came, Caesar would growl and uh, I think intimidated the, uh, the waiter. My mother used to make the homemade bread. Uh, you couldn't just buy bread at all. I mean, that put men going into town, uh, which was 19 miles away. So uh, when she made the bread, she made the yeast and the dough. She placed it into tins, and then she would put it into a Dutch oven. Now, a Dutch oven is uh, an African way. Uh, of uh, baking the bread. So you put it in like to a hole in the ground, you cover it with the, uh, the sand and the bread would automatically uh, bake and then we were able to eat it. That was very enjoyable. It was always homemade bread. Then the other thing she always made was the old fashioned ginger beer. Now, that was also lovely. Uh, when she made the ginger beer, she'd put it into bottles and then she'd lay the bottles on the ground and she would put a wet sack over the bottles to mature. If the bottles were upright, they would burst. All the food that we had was in fact homemade. My mother contracted malaria and uh, she was running very, very high temperatures for about three weeks. Uh, she was unable, there was no doctors available and uh, no one around. I think she eventually was able to get some quinine. But by the time she went to the Hartley Hospital and the doctors checked her out, uh, they informed her that she had the mitral disease of the heart and that was only two valves working instead of four. But uh, I can also remember that I too was very, very seriously ill with malaria. I think we were all soaked with malaria in those years. I can remember being in the hospital at the time and they had Hassian for a ceiling. It was like a, I can't say a, a rondavel or a polar dog. I think there were brick, uh, brick buildings, but totally unfinished. And uh, they would give me water to drink uh, with uh, glucose in. Um, at the time, but uh, I can remember being very serious, very, very serious. And then there were a few occasions uh, when we were in Salisbury and uh, I was taken to the uh, Salisbury Hospital at the time because I had uh, some heart conditions. I think it was a murmur on the heart, but uh, as life went, I was, grew up, I was fine. The gold stream that my parents were following had in fact dried up. Uncle Percy explained to me that all the monies that they had made from the gold had in fact been ploughed back into the mine. And this of course left them bankrupt. So the decision uh, was in fact to, to move the family on to Bulawayo. So my father hired a, a wagon with the oxen and he loaded the furniture onto the wagon and it took him two days to be able to arrive at the Katuma railway station where the, the furniture was then uh, journeyed to Bulawayo. My mother started a commercial school uh, teaching 
uh, shorthand in typing, that was Pittman's shorthand in typing. She actually qualified at Cape Town um, College before coming up to Rhodesia at that time. And, uh, and my father looked after the three of us. Uh, and we were living, if I'm right, in Gray Street, Bulawayo. And I can remember the dairy wasn't very far from us and he would give us a penny with a big jug to go and buy milk at the dairy. And of course, we used to come home with this great big jug full of skin milk. And we could drink it to our heart's content at that time. My dad also used to take us for the picnic. So we'd pack the tea, we'd make tea in bottles and take some sandwiches with us. And we'd go to the park and he would sit under the trees with us and uh, we'd play on the swings. He was quite a jolly old man. Well, a jolly father, I should say. I didn't realize how old he was at the time, but no, very, very, very kind. Um, and uh, him and Uncle Percy, uh, got on extremely well um, right through life. Uh, on the weekends, my mother and father uh, took us to the different um, places in Bulawayo, and uh, one of the places they took us to was in fact Cecil John Rose's grave. And we went to quite a few other places. I can't remember the names at the moment. And, uh, no, I, would, I think my mother and father in those years were in fact very happy. They seemed to work together and um, I think she was happy to, in what she was doing in, in her work line. And I think my father was happy to look after all of us. And I might say that he was actually very good because there's a lot of things that I do today that he taught me. <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> When I had to go to school, he'd take us to school and that because my mother was the main breadwinner. My father, I feel, uh, as I'm looking back on his life, it is, it is possible uh, that he could have been quite seriously wounded in the Boer War. On record, he, he was wounded on the 9th of December, 1900. And I'm not sure exactly the seriousness of his uh, wounds, but it's quite obvious that during the marriage with my mother, um, he looked after us perhaps more so, and my mother was the person that actually went out and got the job. It was also now the, the first time that I actually went to school, but that's where I started at that time in Sabay and Sabi. That was really KG1 and KG2 today and uh, by schooling actually started in Bulawayo. The, the actual weather was very, very cold and perhaps I felt the winter very much so in those years. I can never remember anything else but happiness. We were always spoken to. Um, my dad always showed us what to do. Uh, never really had much money. My mother did make a lot of clothes for us, which can be noticed in the uh, in the photos because she she made for all of us. We all looked the same. So again, she made me uh, like a couple of old rag dolls. They used to be very ugly, but oh, I loved them. They had to come. <laughs> but uh, we had no toys really. It was sort of make your own um, with uh, you know your own fun. There was. You know, no schooling, nothing like that. So, no, I think those years for me as I'm growing, I grew up, uh, I think they were very happy years. <laughs>